<laughs> there we go. Hey everybody, Tony here. Uh, it's Sunday, we're doing a little brew day, me and my brother. He's the one making the video. I just wanted to show you a couple of things. I'm not going to do an entire brew video because it's been done by a million people. But uh, we're brewing up a nut brown ale. Uh, in my last video I mentioned the use of the cheap thermometer. So I want to give you a little look at how I clip on the candy thermometer. I'm also using that nearly free 5 gallon stainless steel pot that I mentioned getting at a yard sale. So uh, the equipment right here costs maybe <laughs> costs maybe a total of uh, what three dollars. So trying to save money, right? Um, we're just starting up the brew for the brew day. We have our specialty grains in our little sack. So I'm going to stick that in to steep for a while. And that's just going to sit in there until we hit 170. That's based on the recipe. That's not always how I do it with uh, steeping grains. Sometimes we uh, bring the water up to 140 or so and then let it sit there for 20 minutes. Uh, this particular recipe calls for putting it in and then bringing the water up to 170 and then taking the grains out. So that's what I'm going to do this time around. Uh, it's a simple recipe. We may kind of put little clips of the rest of the brew day. We're going to use uh, Fuggles and Nottingham yeast. And we just have a uh, large six pound jug of... Uh, there it is. What do we have? Gold malt extract syrup. So again, this is just a quick extract brew with some specialty grains. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes with some more parts of the brew day. Bye. Okay. So we have reached our boil. I took the grains out at about 160 because we're using an electric stove and it was taking a while for the temperature to get up I don't want to leave the grains in too long so I took the grains out and then we let the wort go for a while until it reached its uh, boil point and now at this point we're going to put in our malt extract and then let it boil for an hour or actually bring it back to a boil and then put in our hop addition I'm drinking a uh, dogfish head festina pesce that's that peach uh, summertime seasonal that they put out. It's really good actually. It has a strong peach scent to it and it's just a little tart. Uh, I wouldn't really call it a sour beer but it does have tartness to it. It's very good. Mm. Very refreshing beer. So we're going to take our malt extract. We had that sitting in the water bath so it would warm up and we're going to pour that in while mixing. We took the we took the pot off the heat so we wouldn't scorch our malt extract as we're adding that. And something else uh, that people do a lot of times is they'll put a late extract or a late addition extraction. So ins instead of putting all of this in now, they would put some of it at the end. But this is a fairly dark beer, and I'm not really worried about uh, too much caramelization or uh, change in. Uh, the change in color. So I'm just going to put it all in now and do the full boil with all the malt extract in there. Sometimes with the lighter color beers, I do like to hold off some of the malt extract and I'll put in uh, perhaps the dry malt extract or the liquid malt extract at the last 15 or 10 minutes of the boil. But again, in this, in this case, we have a fairly dark beer. It's a, a nut brown. It's going to be a dark brown anyway. So I'm just going to put it all in and play it from there. Once this is done, we're going to bring it up to a boil, put our first hop addition, and let it go for 60 minutes. Bye. We've reached our boil, so it's going to start our 60 minute, put our 60 minute, one ounce Fuggles hop edition. Yeah, use a hop sock. Done.
At the 10 minute mark, I'm going to put in a little bit of this Y yeast beer nutrient blend that I have. It just takes about half a teaspoon with some warm water. Mix it up and pop it in. That be that. Our 60 minute boil is done. We have the hot wort sitting in our pot on a little heat proof uh, spot. Usually uh, a lot of people put their... Oh, that's the timer. <laughs> a lot of people like to put their wort chiller into the boil at 10 or 15 minutes. That way it sanitizes it. I had a, a bucket of star sand going anyway. So I just left our chiller soaking in the star sand. Uh, until we're ready, which is now. So we're going to transfer our chiller. Going to just get some of that star, extra star sand off there. It's not a big deal, but I like to do that. And insert. And we'll just get our water going. And we're going to chill down for probably about 15-20 minutes till we reach a 70-75 degree temperature and pitch the yeast. See you in a few. We finished chilling. It took about 8 minutes. We got it down to 70 degrees. I stopped at 70 because we're topping off for this. This was a partial boil. So we're going to be topping off with 2 to 3 gallons of cold water. That's going to bring it way down. Um, I haven't been showing this really, but I, I have my star sand in a spray bottle, and I'm crazy about sanitation where I'm just constantly spraying all of my equipment back and forth. This bucket was filled with star sand, that's what the chiller was in. So everything's all sani uh, sanitary, everything has star sand going. I'm just going to pour this wort into our bucket, and then we're going to top off with water, pitch with yeast, and we're pretty much done for the day. I like to pour fairly aggressively because we want to aerate this anyway. Sometimes I put a strainer in there and pour it through the strainer. And just get that all in there. I'm going to stop. There's a little, you know, sludge stuff at the bottom there that we I don't mind losing. Uh, from this point, we're just going to bring it up to five gallons using top off water. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera so as not to bore you. And when we come back, we'll pitch the yeast and call it a day. Prior to pitching the yeast, we took a quick hydrometer sample. We were looking for 1.044 original gravity for this nut brown, and that's exactly what we got, 1.044, even though we put a little extra water in with our batch. So that was good to see. So we've got our top off water together. We're a little over five gallons. We put it a, a little over. And the temperature is, I think, between 62 and 64. So that's uh, about perfect for what I was looking for. We're using that Nottingham. Just going to spray this down on the outside, make sure that you know nothing nasty gets in with our yeast. And cut this open. Now, some people may like to do use starters and also um, something as easy as just rehydrating the yeast. Personally, uh, you know, I just like to pitch it right on top of the wort, like so. Give it a little sprinkle over the top portion. You can see we've got nice foam on top of this because of the um, aeration that we're doing. We just mix it up really vigorously with a, a spoon or with our mash paddle, I should say. So. I like to just leave that for a few minutes. I'll put the lid on so nothing else kind of works its way in there. Just leave it there for now. And uh, I'll leave that for about 10 minutes, mix it all in, and put our star sand into the airlock. And we're pretty much done for the day. I'm just mixing in the rest of that yeast. Give it a little swirl there, make sure everything's kind of mixed in. You don't have to go crazy at this point. I, I already mixed it vigorously for the aeration. And that's pretty much it. We're going to put our lid on. Actually, I like to usually, even though this has been sanitized a million times, I like to give it one last spritz all around. 
let a little of that extra stuff come out. And I even give it a little bit of a spritz around the edge there, just in case. Knock that down. Pop in our lock. Let's pour in a little bit of our star sand. I like to use star sand. I used to use water. I know some people like to put vodka in there. Um, I just stick with the star sand. I figure if anything gets sucked in, that it'll be safe. And put our lid. That's it. I like to sometimes just give it a little push to see that it bounces, you know, you got positive seal. And we're ready to put this down in our fermenting basement where it'll stay a pretty solid 62, 63, um, which is why I like brewing at my brother's house because we can really keep that temperature controlled nicely. So uh, I know I said that we weren't going to do much of an uh, a entire brew day video, but I guess that's kind of what we ended up doing. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.